folks, you are at the Pragmatics YouTube channel. If you have not subscribed to this channel, now's a great time to do it. You will get notifications on any time we post a new video, which is normally two to three times a week covering Power BI, Power Apps, Azure, Power Automate, so on and so forth. And what our company does is we do things like on-demand learning, private trainings, hackathons, virtual mentoring, and virtual mentoring is what led me to this exact video. I was working with the customer about a month ago and uh, she said, hey, Matt, I've got this model. Things are going great, but is there any way to make it uh, just a little bit better? The data refresh is taking a little bit long. Um, any things that you can give me some pointers on? I said, for sure. Let's go open up DAX Studio, which is a third party tool, connect to your report, analyze the data model, and let's just look at your columns. How much space are they taking? And I looked at one of her tables, and on this table with 40 columns, this one column was taking up over 15% of the table itself, and for her whole data model, it was 4% of the data model. What? And that's just one column. So I said, let's go take a look at that column and see what's going on with it. And when we looked at it, it was a DAX calculated column using the if statement. And I said, okay. So I have a fix for you. I think we can accomplish this same result of this calculated column over in the Power Query Editor. So we worked on it. We got it to work in the Query Editor, the exact same result she wanted with her calculated column. But then when we put it back into DAX Studio, that column now was way less in terms of percentages. I think it was only 2% of the table itself. And then it went down to maybe like only 0.5% of uh, the entire data model. So this is something great. If functions are really nice and easy to use quickly with DAX, uh, however, we can get most of those same accomplishments done over in the query editor. And that's what I wanna show you in this video. So let's go take a look at a sample report here of how we can get this accomplished. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna come on over and I got some dummy data in here. This is the AdventureWorks database, if you're familiar with it. And I wanna put in a, a target column for my groups of customers. I wanna analyze their gender, um, actually, you know what, let's do their marital status and their yearly income. And I'm gonna put them into three separate groups. Now, if you already know how to write nested if statements, scrub through the video about a minute ahead. But if you want to see another review of how to use if statements, just keep, keep, uh, keep on here right now. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna call this my target group and I'm just simply gonna do a check. I'm gonna say, let's do, you know what? Let's do an if check. Let's check their marital status. Let's see if they are single. And I also wanna check their yearly income. So yearly income. And if their yearly income is also, let's go with less than or equal to 30,000, then I wanna put them in target group A. And then if they're not, I could just go target B and be done with it. But to make it a little bit more advanced, let's do another check. Let's say we're gonna have target A, B, and C. So now I'm gonna say, you know what? I don't know what they're currently, if they don't meet this first requirement, let's do another check. So I'm gonna come down one line, do another if statement, gonna check their marital status again, and I'm still gonna look to see if they are single. Now let's make sure I did single to start with, yep. And now I wanna check their yearly income. So we'll go with their yearly income and let's see if they are greater than 30,000. And if so, I'm going to put them in target group B. And then for everybody else, so if they're not single, basically meaning they're married um, and I don't care about their income if they're married, I just want to put them into target group C. And we're done. This is a nice, quick, easy DAX formula to use. And so for quick validation, target A, this should be less than 30,000 and they should be single. So let's come on over here, less than 30,000. That is good, less than or equal to 30,000 and their marital status is single. Now let's come on over and check target group. Let's go for target group B just to make sure things are working appropriately. Target group B here, we should have these are gonna be our singles and they should be over 30,000, picture perfect. Those are 100,000, 70, we see that's working picture perfect. And you know me, I always like, if you haven't watched my videos before, I'm always a big validator. I don't wanna just prove that it is magic. So target C, these should be all of our married people. So we go to, to marital status and yes, these are all of our married people. Picture perfect, things work great. But let's see if we can get this done over in the query editor and improve our performance. So I'm gonna come up here, I'm gonna go into transform data. I wanna show you how we can put these in. You might say, Matt, I know what to do. 
I know that you need to come up here to your add column and then put in a conditional column. Tis true, but I'm doing two different checks. I'm not just checking if they're single or married. I'm checking that as well along with their income. So I'm gonna approach this in a different manner. What I'm going to do is in this add column, I'm gonna come up here and do a custom column. So I'm gonna select custom column and I'm gonna call this validation because we're gonna compare this column to the one we just made to make sure things work. And what we're gonna start off with here is an if statement. However, it's not using DAX, this is using the M language, so we have to write it a little bit differently. So I'm gonna start off with if, and then I want to reference the column. So I wanna check the marital status. So I'm gonna do marital status, and I wanna see if the marital status is equal to single. Then I wanna also check the yearly income. I'm not ready to give a result yet, but I can't use the double ampersand signs here. Uh, we're not using DAX, so in the M language, it's just simply and. So check the marital status and also check the yearly income. And we wanna see if that is less than or equal to 30,000. Then we say, okay, if that's true, what do we want? So then we actually write in the word then. And because this is gonna be a text data type, we're gonna wrap it in double quotes here. I'm gonna put them into target A group. So this is what we have to start off with. Now it's not gonna let me do anything. We're seeing this red because an if statement says, okay, if that's not true, what do we do next? And if we were done, we would just simply say else, and then we could put in like target B. But we know that we have three different groups. So how do we get this accomplished in the Power Query Editor if we have multiple if checks? So rather than else, to do another check, we're gonna do else if. So now it's saying, okay, I'm ready for the next if statement to check. And so what I wanna check here is I wanna to go to the marital status, see if they are equal to being single, and I then want to also check that yearly income and see if it is greater than 30,000. Okay, if so, what group are they going to be in? Well, then that means they will be in target group B. All right, fantastic. But again, we're getting those red lines because we're doing these nested ifs. So it's knowing that we really haven't finished the initial if statement. So we finish all of this off always with the final else statement. And so we're gonna say else, everything else that does not code up to the first or the second statement, we're gonna put them into the target C group. So I'm gonna hit okay here. All right, no errors, which is good. I'm gonna change the data type on over to text. And now let's see if this really worked, right? So I'm gonna come over, I'm gonna close and apply this, and now let's validate. So I'm gonna come on over, let me get this out of the way come to the far right, and let's just take a look. I'm gonna validate, let's take a look at only. So currently we have target C, which is good, because I've had this filter down just to target C. So things are picture perfect. Let's see if our target A's match up. So get rid of target C, let's go to target A. Ooh, target A's, things are looking good. If I hit the drop down here, it's saying that only target A's are showing, so we're getting the exact same results. Last one, Target B, and voila, target B is the only one showing up. So again, here, we were getting able to get the exact same accomplishment over in the query editor as opposed to DAX. Now, which one is easier? It all depends on what you feel more comfortable with, but which one's gonna give you the better results? 99% of the time, it's gonna be doing it over in the Power Query Editor. So hopefully you can add this into your current reports that you've used in the past. Go in the Power Query Editor, make this quick change, and now you don't need that calculated column anymore. So again, I hope you like this video. Uh, you might not have known you could have done this over in the Query Editor. Now you know, and I hope to see you in the next video.